Thank you so much. And first of all, I'd like to thank uh, Colonel uh, Familia for inviting me over. He was the one who coordinated my presence here. I'd like to greet, of course, uh, the delegates from the East-West uh, 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 Fellows, headed by uh, Dr. Finan and uh, Madame Hartman. My, uh, the other distinguished personalities here, Yusek uh, Garcia, Yusek Valeriano, and all the generals and colonels here, thank you. You know, this is a very comprehensive topic, and it would usually take about an hour to give uh, my useful presentation, but I'd like uh, to abbreviate this. First of all, on the issue of uh, saying that the South China Sea, since it contains the word China, can be claimed by China, if we follow that rule, uh, they would be at a terrible disadvantage because uh, to their uh, east, is the Sea of Japan. If we go by that, that would be owned by Japan. East of the Philippines, uh, from uh, our east uh, coast all the way to Guam, is the Philippine Sea, which is a big body of water. And then to the west would be the, the vast uh, Indian Ocean. And if uh, that's going to be the rule, then we'll have a terribly encircled uh, China uh, geographically. So I don't think uh, they'd like uh, that kind of uh, reckoning uh, system. And thank you again for inviting me to this uh, round table. I'd like to fast forward, instead of talking chronologically, by uh, talking about what grabbed the headlines uh, end of uh, last week, when Defense Secretary As Carter made an announcement that this was uh, covered by international media. And the headline in the Wall Street Journal, which uh, Secretary Carter, Defense Secretary of the United States Carter, selected as the medium to make that announcement. U.S. military proposes challenge to China's sea claims. And I quote, Defense Secretary As Carter has asked his staff to look at options that include flying Navy surveillance aircraft over the islands, meaning the reef uh, that are being reclaimed, and sending U.S. naval ships to well within 12 nautical miles of reefs that have been built up and claimed by the Chinese in an area known as the Sprati Islands. And of course, this reverberated. Uh, this was quite a, a big uh, surprise. And a lot of people are trying to analyze this. Uh, why would the press secretary ask Carter pre-announce something that is supposed to be just a proposal. You usually don't do that, especially if you submit uh, something for the approval of uh, the president, because one has been in the cabinet and one does not preempt, one does not put on the spot the president, because this might be construed as a bold proposal on the part of the defense secretary, and it's up to the president to equally make a bold decision. So if he does not follow the proposal, what would that make him? So it is surmised that uh, perhaps when this announcement was made, there was already discussion between the defense establishment and the White House. That is the knowing uh, the ways of uh, decision making and bureaucracy. And of course, this was uh, promptly responded to by China. And the headline is uh, China extremely concerned, using diplomatists, extremely concerned at U.S. military plan in South China Sea. I would leave it up to Under Secretary Evan Garcia of uh, the Department of Foreign Affairs to interpret what extremely concerned means. Does that mean they're very upset, they're violently opposing uh, the announcement? Uh, and to me, this is a very serious uh, response. Thank you. And of course, this was followed by another headline, China-U.S. head towards space off in the South China Sea. This is a, a build-up on, uh, on the scenario, a build-up on the crescendo, uh, never before achieved uh, so far as uh, the South China Sea is concerned, because previously it would be a standoff between the Philippines and China, a standoff between Vietnam and uh, China, but now, we're seeing in the headlines a standoff 
between two big powers, great uh, powers. And Secretary Kerry proceeded to China uh, this weekend and had a talk with the Foreign Minister of China, Wang Yi, and later with President uh, Xi Jinping. And uh, in spite of that meeting, uh, the headline says, South China Sea dispute remains a sticking point in U.S.-China talks. Uh, they had a press conference, they sounded uh, very friendly, but uh, a lot of people interpreted the press conference as a little soft on the part of the United States uh, in contrast to the hard position that was being projected before the conference. And uh, another headline carried uh, that Beijing rebuked the U.S. over the island's growth. And of course, uh, one uh, very alarming uh, uh, article headline, American ships in South China Sea may lead to war between U.S. and China. And uh, showing uh, this uh, very modern uh, frigates and destroyers firing uh, missiles. Uh, we don't know which uh, direction, whether that's going to China or going to uh, the side of the U.S. Navy. It seems the United States has found another playground for its war games. The National Interest reported that Washington plans to send its military ships and planes to patrol areas in the South China Sea is stirring up an already tense situation in the region where several nations have competing territorial claims. And I'd like to show here, I think uh, you're all familiar with this, uh, the bone of contention, the reef, the reefs and the reclamations uh, going on. Uh, Pirate Cross Reef, Quarteron Reef, Johnson Reef, Mischief Reef, Cayman Reef, Sube Reef, Use Reef. I've been talking about this since 1995, uh, 1994, when uh, China uh, constructed uh, what they call temporary shelters in the ship reef later converted into permanent shelters. They have been part of my advocacy as a member of Congress for six terms. And uh, a lot of these are very, very close to the Philippines. In fact, closer to the Philippines than Vietnam, Malaysia, and of course, uh, most especially China. They would be easily about a thousand miles from China, from Hainan, and uh, maybe about 200, 100, 30 nautical miles from uh, Palawan of the Philippines. And here's a picture of uh, a reef construction reclamation that has attracted the most attention, and this is Fiery Cross Reef. Used to be a very small uh, area, but now uh, they're constructing a 3,000 meter long uh, runway. Uh, the first airstrip in the Sprat Islands in the South China Sea of China. Now, a lot of people are saying, why quarrel, why fight over small rocks? And uh, they try to decide on the importance of this issue on the basis of how much fish you can catch there, and how much uh, oil and natural gas uh, are present there. But uh, these are just natural resources. But to me, the more important thing is the strategic position of these rips. You give me one square foot, very cheap uh, real estate property, one square foot is uh, very cheap, but if I have a long range uh, sniper rifle, I can control maybe a, a several hectares uh, around that uh, square foot, given a very good weapon. And here's uh, a good write-up on what a small reef in the South China Sea could how it could change the military balance in the Pacific. And I quote, it would put Chinese air superiority fully in charge of the area, only being opposed by countries like the Philippines that, I'm sorry to say, Colonel Padilla, do not even have a single fighter jet now. It will also bring Australia into the 3,500 nautical mile range of China's biggest bombers, and when combined with their cruise missile range of 2,000 nautical miles, it will extend the range that China can strike targets at over 5,000 nautical miles. 
that type of capability in the South China Sea is a game changer in the Pacific region, to say the least. And of course, a game changer. That is the most important consideration, the strategic value of these uh, small reefs. And if you go back uh, to the history of warfare in the Pacific War, from 1941 up to 1945, a lot of the decisions were made by uh, fighting over small rocks in the Pacific area. Island hopping. I delivered a uh, paper about a year ago when uh, I started hearing about uh, this reclamation. At first, they were eyeing the Mabidi Reef. 1,000 mile radius, what would 1,000 mile radius do? That is the, the, uh, the range of a, uh, a flanker of China, maybe a J11 or a J10. Uh, a 2,000, it has a 2,000 mile range. In other words, it can fly 1,000 miles and come back uh, to its home base. And if its home base is uh, Mabini Reef inside the, the Spratlis, uh, very close uh, to the Philippines, that 1,000 mile radius can enable the flanker to uh, threaten the entire, practically the entire Vietnam, as you can see from uh, the map there, the whole of the Philippines, and practically the whole of Borneo, and the entire South China Sea. That is how strategically important an airstrip in the South China Sea is. And I mention again uh, all this uh, ongoing land reclamation project in the South uh, China Sea. And you can see from the map that uh, all of them are much closer to Palawan, our uh, big island, than Vietnam, than Malaysia, and more so than China. We are the ones who are going to be directly affected by this, but it is not only the Philippines that will be affected. It will affect the balance of power, and it will affect the security and economy of other countries like Taiwan, South Korea, Japan, and of course, the United States, which as a superpower must have control of uh, all the oceans of the world. When uh, I attended a meeting late January in Japan, we talked about uh, the changing maritime architecture, maritime security architecture in the Pacific area. We mentioned the strategic triangle in the South China Sea, and that is what we felt was uh, uh, being prepared by China. What is the South uh, the Strategic Triangle? The north uh, corner of the triangle is the Paracels. It is already fully occupied and uh, fully uh, equipped by uh, China. Uh, they have uh, an air base there uh, close to Hainan. And the other, the second point of the triangle is the cluster of reefs that are undergoing reclamation now, particularly Johnson South Reef and Fire Cross Reef. And when that is completed, they would go to the other, the third point of the triangle, and that would be Scarborough Shoal, which they grabbed, which China grabbed in April 2012. As mentioned earlier, this has been the fishing area of uh, Filipino fishermen for hundreds of years. Uh, it's called Bao de Masildo. You can look at old map of the Philippines and it's there, included as a part of the Philippines. So, when that is completed, and when they complete the reclamation in the cluster of reefs that I pointed out earlier, they will go to Scarborough Shoal. And Scarborough Shoal is a big shoal. I uh, don't have a picture here, but uh, I'd like to tell you that the area of uh, the lagoon in the shoal is as big as the biggest city of the Philippines in Metro Manila, Quezon City. Uh, we are inside Quezon City. You can travel uh, an hour and still be in Quezon City. And you can imagine can, or visualize how many, what kind of fleets uh, you can assemble in an area as big as uh, Quezon City, which is about uh, 150 square kilometers. So that will be the strategic triangle. And if this is accomplished, it will affect the balance of power in the region. There is the so-called first island chain and the second island chain. 
uh, they are interpreted in some way as defense lines of China.